Pedro from the Imperiax. I'm here today with Nine of Wormwood to talk about Archivet, their latest record coming out August 27th on Black Lodge Records. And by the look on your face, I butchered the name of the title of the record. Uh, you're not the first one, so you're fine. So uh, what's the right pronunciation? Archivet. Archivet. Was that so better? You were, yeah, yeah, it's fine. I mean, you can say the archive also, you know, it's the same thing really, so it's fine. You're, you're, you're okay with it. You're not going to hold it against me. Uh, not yet. All right. Not yet, not yet. I like that. Uh, before we talk about this record, let's go back a little bit. Uh, how would you describe the path that the band has taken, both musically and creatively, from the first record all the way up until now this album? Well, I would go so far to say our first EP when we released uh, The Void, uh, Stories from the Whispering Well from 2015, I believe. We were more of a rock and roll black band with some folk thing and then we just when we released ghostlands we were like well we don't have any rules we have no one to cater to we yeah so we just made all of the things that we could think of really but still felt true for you know then we did a behemoth album of uh, 12 songs and then we took that when we created Nat Arvet. So we took the things that we liked from Ghostlands, kept it in Nat Arvet, and then the things we thought worked for Nat Arvet and kept them to Arkivet. So we're keeping something always and then, but always progressing going forward. So now you're at this record, now you've arrived here, and listening to this album, I, I felt like there's a little bit of the pandemic in it. I'm not saying that you're talking about vaccines or you're talking about a virus or, or whatever the case might be, but a, a little bit of, of despair or, or, or lack of light at the end of the tunnel kind of comes across with this record. Was that impacted by the pandemic or is just the way you normally see the world anyways? Well, most of the lyrics were written in the end of 2019. So that was really before the pandemic really had uh, became as big as it is now. Uh, maybe a couple of, maybe one or two lyrics were done afterwards, but uh, I knew from the beginning that I wanted to kind of uh, write uh, like the final letter to and from Earth. And that is kind of how I see when I write lyrics anyway. So I wouldn't say the, the um, pandemic impacted the lyrics, but it impacted how much we could work with it because there were no live gigs. So we could just focus on creating the album. So the impact that the pandemic had is not necessarily directly in the sound or the lyrical content, but how you guys actually created the record. Yeah, exactly. We, we just felt we had more time. There were no stress to rehearse uh, uh, songs for upcoming gigs and festivals, even though that would be pretty nice also. But we just have, it was an uh, unobstructed path to create the best album that we could make, really. So that was, you know, the silver lining when it comes to the pandemic, I guess. This brings me to two different points. One is, so how is the creative process of Wormwood? How, how, is, how, how do things get started? That's the part one. And the part two of the question is, since you guys started this before the pandemic, but it, it really works well in terms of where we currently are, is that really a snapshot of, of you as a person, as an individual, more so, more so than anything else? Um, first, when it comes to the creation of the of the music, it's usually uh, Tobias Rydsheim, uh, the main uh, composer and uh, guitarist. He, uh, you know, comes up with riffs and melodies and parts of songs at home, and then, you know, he sends us a link, and then we listen to it, we say what we like, what we dislike, and uh, if it is like it goes through the, you know, democratic slaughterhouse, which is the... Uh, the, the, the center Wormwood here, uh, we rehearse it and, you know, get a feel from it. But, you know, it can be maybe our drummer come up with some riffs or maybe our second guitarist, you know, everyone is involved, but it's mainly to be, yes, it comes up with the main idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lyrics, you sometimes they come before, sometimes they come after. It is, uh, depends on the feeling. And to the second half, uh, it was just, um, I wouldn't say luck, but, Nothing really changed for me, you know, when I wrote it. it. I mean, we could have a fucking kumbaya year and, you know, everyone was happy. No one killed each other. The world would still suck, you know, so nothing would change really. 
So it, that's pretty much your 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 standard view as you are right now. No, I, I yeah, I mean it's just uh, I felt like most of the lyrics from Arkivet felt they are more fact based, but in a poetic way. I mean, the world is going to shit. You know, the the you know nature is failing because of human interactions and uh, there is no really uh, the only light at the end of the tunnel is you know a big fucking bomb so i, I was gonna say a big train but you know that that works too a big train with a bomb <laughs> a big train with a bomb uh listening to this record i had perhaps a false sense of simplicity is this a, a record that's simple for the listener to understand and process, or is that just a result of, of how you guys created the album that gives that that fake illusion of simplicity? Um, I wouldn't. I mean, in my opinion, I wouldn't say it, it's simple. You mean simple as in uh, musically? How it's Sim uh, simple to digest, simple to understand. It's not one of those records that you feel like. You know, you're 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 pounding me with information, and you're pounding me with 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 different layers and different things that it, it makes it really hard for me to, at the end of the record, come back to the album again because I just feel really tired of the overall experience. This record really felt light from that perspective. That when I got to the end of the record, I was more than happy to press play and go back to the beginning again. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, when it comes to, let's say, the lyrics, it isn't like super introspective as maybe dark tranquility is, you know, that, you know, what is this really about? This, I tried to write this, this is what it, what it is, uh, but it's up for you to interpret, the, you know, the meaning behind it. And um, I guess in that sense, it is an easy album to understand, even though it has the the level of uh, you know different levels of melancholy which we all feel more or less but you know maybe this is a bit more uh, nordic centric melancholy that we are out for but yeah i i would say so it is maybe easier than let's say ghostlands our first one because then you have 12 songs that no one sounds the same really yeah this one there's more of a sense of a path of a continuation which made the record uh play itself a lot better and that's why I, I i felt like it felt simple to me because it was a record that i could just sit down listen to it and i really felt like the songs were doing all the work for me moving me from track to track kind of guiding me through the journey of the overall listening experience yeah um that is i i would say is a fair uh, assessment because when we released ghostlands again uh, i felt like oh there's no really red thread i mean at least that's what i thought uh, people who would review it, they would say, oh, th these are great 12 songs, but they they have nothing to do with each other, except it's the same band. And maybe there are one or two songs from Not Advet that feels like, oh, I mean, this is a, it's a gr great album, but I don't, I'm not sure what these two songs are doing there. And with that key that, you know, where it's still getting to, you know, this, I'm not sure if we will ever find our sound. Our, our sound might be that we don't have a particular sound there's always some curveball one song you know maybe on our fourth album we will have a 15 minute uh, you know did you do solo i have no idea if it feels true for us we will do it so the the red line that you didn't have there before that perhaps i'm seeing it a little bit more of it on this album H how do you achieve that red line is is there an element within the soundscape that connects these tracks or do you spend some? Did you spend some more time with the track listing and the overall structure of the album in order to give the record more of that continuous feel? I wouldn't say because uh, I wouldn't say we worked longer uh, on this album compared to the other ones. We have released one album every second year, so you know uh, it's more or less the same. But it is we feel more uh connected as a band you know we we know what we like we know what we dislike and because we don't really have any rules and we're coming we're understanding that more and more for every album we, we release we know that there are no rules i mean uh we are whatever genre the listener wants us to be we we don't care i mean if you think we're a pagan band sure if we're black whatever or we it doesn't matter if you take away the rules, as maybe other bands might have, let's say it doesn't matter, take um, whatever band, 
they can't do certain things because they've never done it before. It would be very strange and, you know, if for them to do it. Well, we don't have that. And I think that makes us more easier to work as a unit and create the things we do. It allows you to be more creative. It gives you a bigger palette of, of choices and taste. Yeah, I mean, that's not saying that bands who, you know, don't have a four minute Pink Floyd solo don't, aren't, aren't creative. I mean, saying that we are, maybe we have more, because there is no rules, we can be even more creative. There's definitely some changes from record to record, and we already talked a little bit about that. But when you look at this album and the previous album, what do you feel are the are, are the most uh, impactful differences as far as the soundscape is concerned? Hmm. Um, good question. I would say the second album, not that it. We I, we try to make it feel more homey, as in this needs to feel Swedish or Nordic. Or Scandinavic. Uh, we had more folk instruments. The, the theme was around, you know, what happened here in Sweden, you know, 140 years ago. Mm -hmm. While now we have expanded it to a more of a worldwide thing, even though it's again more uh, Nordic centric in the in the viewpoint of it all. So I guess when when you take away the uh, um, serenity of the folk part i guess then you can make it maybe more cinematic and bigger because you don't have the the the, the frame of making something for lack of better terms you know pagan and folky right so yeah that, just, that, that has more of a a cultural define Maybe that's yes. a better way of putting it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I'm sure, you know, uh, with enough time, we could, you know, make both uh, of these albums sounds, sound the same. But I think it's the theme, mostly. Uh, I think it's the theme that really creates the, the vibe of the music we hear. So, I mean, it would feel a bit uh, disingenuous if we would, uh, you know, have uh, uh, seven uh, folk songs about, you know, the environment. That sounds a bit strange. Yeah, th that would definitely be a little bit strange. Having said that, there are still some folk elements on this record. And, and one of the things that I liked about them is that you were still able to include those almost as a little bit of the luggage, the emotional luggage that came from the previous record into this one. But you guys use them differently on this one. I, I felt like in the previous album, they were there to kind of paint the picture of that cultural background that was the story that you guys were telling. And on, and on this record, I felt like they were there not to do that, but to kind of give a little bit more extra layers here and there, give give a little bit more spice. Was was that the reasoning behind it? Uh, more or less. I mean, let's say if we go back to not thought of it, then the folky part was more of a protagonist in the, in the thing. Here it is more of a side character, more of a detail. So there, there are two songs or, you know, that have a, a distinctive folk parts, while the other songs might have, you know, a bit of... Uh, guitar flirting to the folky part but uh, there are two songs that but, but that was most because of the theme also uh, the theme of those two songs felt more nordic than the other so that's why we wanted to keep them with the more of a folky part because i i don't think we will ever uh go away fully from the folk part because it's um you know intrinsic part of everyone in the band so yeah so is, is the the choice of using a little bit of a narrator here and there also defined by the theme yeah i would say so i mean again it would feel strange to have a uh, fucking bagpipes and accordion and sing about the fires in the amazon you know if other people want to do it go ahead but we wouldn't do it we rather have the folk part when singing about old Scandinavian ladies dying alone in the forest. How, how much work do you put in uh, as far as the vocals are concerned when you start to get ready for, for the album? Do, do you give it some thought process? Or, or is your vocal performance impacted by the lyrical content and, and by the mood, by the story that the songs are telling? Um, I'm sure there are certain parts of uh, 
songs that you know I have a different kind of uh, vocals because of the, the the theme and the feeling of it. But the main difference here is um, we recorded it not with uh, a, a person who usually do uh, metal music. And this time doing the vocals, it was only me and uh, Tobias, I did say our main composer. So there were no producer, there were no one other. It was only two people from the band. So it felt like we, I had more, uh, I could do more. There are lots of more variation and uh, different feelings I do with the vocals on this one compared to maybe not that of it, because not that of it was more this is how you're supposed to do it. This was like, whatever. Oh, do you wanna do a scream there? Let's go for it, let's try. Because we hadn't really no time frame in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it was more, it felt much more relaxed doing it this time. And I really liked it, but you know, we'll see what we do on the fourth album. Th that relaxation that you guys had on this album, from your standpoint, it had a massive positive impact on the turnout of this record? Yeah, well, I, I guess it's also up to the listeners. If some people think that I sang better on, you know, maybe Ghost Lands or not that of it, that's completely fine. I still feel that this is my best vocal performance in Wormwood because I think it had to do with, it was only me and uh, Tobias uh, in, a, in the studio, no one else. And they were like, I couldn't do wrong. I mean, because they were, again, there weren't that many rules either. We just had uh, an interesting uh, uh, path uh, creating the vocals for this album. What was the most challenging song for you vocally on this record? Oh, um, might be, well, at the first day I really fucked up my voice because I hadn't sung for quite some time because of the pandemic and stuff. So <laughs> the first day just disappeared. We lost one day because we couldn't use anything. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is gonna be an amazing album. I'm sorry, guys. But um, I came through, uh, did some uh, much needed uh, warm upping abouts and then it was good. But um, most difficult one, I'd say uh, uh, maybe, Hmm. Parts of uh, Ensamheten, the, the only Swedish one, because there's parts of it where there's so much uh, vocals and you can't really do it in one take and it's difficult to do it like uh, in many takes also. So you needed to really puzzle it in together there. And, uh, but it was mostly fun. I like when it's, there's a challenge. I learned from it, you know, from every album I do with, you know, uh, Wormwood or whatever, I, I learn something and I definitely learn stuff from this one. Do you prefer uh, to sing in, in Swedish or, or in English? Where, where is your comfort zone? Uh, I don't really have a preference singing, but, uh, you know, it all depends on the lyrics. I mean, some, some lyrics just works better in English, depending on the topic. And but I guess maybe if it's in Swedish, there's easier to get that more of the pure melancholy. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's uh, like night and day kind of thing there. I would say it's uh, maybe I prefer a little bit more in Swedish, but that wouldn't make me write more Swedish lyrics just because I'd like to sing it more. It needs to fit the concept. Last question for you. We've talked a lot about the differences from the history of the band starting off with the first record, working all the way to this album. But when you look at this record, outside of the, the uh, what makes it different, what gives it its strength? What is the biggest strength about this record? Um, I think it would be, this is our most cinematic album. It feels like every song could be its own movie, not only because of the lyrics and, but just because of the music feels like. And as, as you said, it was easier to get into this one, maybe as a listener compared to the other ones. 
And maybe that's because we have this really cinematic feeling. You can feel that every song is a journey, even though it feels like a cohesive album, there's, there's distinct enough to be its own movie. So I think that is the strength. It just feels bombastic and melancholic. It has all of the things that I want from a Wormwood album, but it has it, you know, we just cranked it up to like a hundred this time, so. I, was gonna, I thought you were going to say we crank it up to 11, but you know. That, that, 100 that. is more than 11. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. Like you're hundred percent correct. There's no, there's no argument to be had about that. Well, Nine, thank you very much for your time today, man. I really appreciate chatting with you about Wormwood and the latest record. It's coming out August 27th on Black Lodge Records. Uh, go check it out. I love the album. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And if you're uh, over 18, maybe you can watch one of our videos on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You're, the videos are always interesting. You guys have a nice way of painting a, a visual to, to the audio that you create. That's 100%. Yeah. Yeah, just give your credit card to the Google gods and you will be able to watch it. <laughs> well, take care, man. All the best. You too.